unfortunately there's still are some men that um see women as less than we used to call it ganda gandas yes when we were still growing yeah, up yeah, yeah. let us stop blaming where we we grew up where we were born into because you can make it work a lot of my my work is dependent on other people to make my vision or my strategy different elements to come together and make it a reality yes it's lord eh i don't know hey i don't know i don't know about this table guy hey is he the <laughs> one to do this for me hey <laughs> And I packed boxes in high heels and I did it to the best of my ability. Yeah. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so tired. Do I? <laughs> Please, man. Uh, my CEO at the time asked me three very uh, funny questions and, and I thought, am I being punked? I don't know, is there a hidden camera somewhere? Who? Oh, what does this even mean? All right, ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, it's your boy Teppo from there and we back again with Varum Cop. A special day today, special field trip. We are at ELB Equipment. They specialize in earth moving, mining, and agriculture equipment. We also here to meet a special lady. So without further ado, let's get it in. And our special guest is Angelique Andrews. She is social media, marketing, and events liaison for ELB Equipment. So ma'am, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us. So. Guys, we are at a, at a site, so we're going to be putting on our reflectors. So this is for health and safety. So in the earth moving, construction and mining industry, very, very important. So we don't get crushed by any moving machines so they can see us, right? Oh, cool. I like this. It goes with your outfit. I'm, I am matching, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're very reflective. There we are. All right. So just zip it up. Now we're visible to everybody in the yard. Perfect. Nobody's going to drive over us. All right, ma'am. I think we can start our walk then. Okay. Should we go this way? Sure. Cool? Sure. Perfect. So Angie, tell me, um, how did you find your way into social media? Like, what is your journey to becoming a social media as well as marketing and the well, events liaison for ELB? How did that come about? So it's actually quite a weird story mm. because I actually went to university and my father insisted that I study finance. And I hate finance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happened is, is I went to university and the man was just not listening to me. And I kept saying to him, this is not for me. This is not for me. This is not for me. But anyway, I then went into the working world. Mm. And my very first proper job was packing boxes. Seriously? For minimum wage. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. I was like, okay, I'm a high heels and dress person. So they put me in a dingy little corner where all these pair parts were and my job was to pack boxes and I dressed up in a suit and high heels and dresses every day and I packed boxes in high heels and I did it to the best of my ability yeah. and I sealed everything and it was just and so I then got promoted and I started doing letters and creditors and I then got promoted again and I started managing a team at one of the production companies we had, yeah. um, producing paint actually. And so it went on and it went on, but I was still doing finance and it was something that I didn't want to do because I was sitting in an office mm. and crunching numbers all day. I didn't really get to speak to people or be with people. I was with numbers. Yeah. So anyway, mm. long story short, I then got another job. Yeah. Um, I was actually head hunted by my previous manager. And then she was like, okay, you're still going to do finance. You're going to be a junior accountant, but we're going to give you something else because we know you're going to be bored sitting at your desk the whole day. Yeah. And then I managed a warehouse. And uh, yeah, I wore PPE. So I wore overalls yes. and safety boots yes. and reflectors. Okay, I didn't have reflectors. Yeah. And I managed this warehouse half mm. of the day. And the other half of the day, I was crunching numbers. And I hated it. Mm. And I hated it. And I was just like, this is not for me. I hate finance. Now, finance people are special people. Let me tell you, very, very, very special kind of person. But it just wasn't for me. Yeah. And God opened the door for me. And there was this uh, marketing position available at a private school in Bedford View. It was called Bishop Haven School. Most magical place. Yeah. And it was for public relations and marketing. Yeah. And I applied for the job. Actually, a friend of mine said to me, apply. And I went and I got the job. And I was like, oh! 
I don't know what to do. Yeah. What am I doing here? Yeah. I don't know yeah. what to do. I mean, it's a big like yeah. disparity from doing finance to now being in marketing. I think. Yes, and public relations. Oh, I yes. don't know what that meant. Yes. But the brief that my friend got was we're looking for a lady, well dressed, well spoken, and she wears heels. So the brief, love yeah. my heels. And that's how I got the job. <laughs> yeah. Nice one. <laughs> and yeah, and then I worked in the educational marketing sector for mm. 12 years. It was my happy place. And then COVID hit. And unfortunately, um, the school got shut down. I had no job. And then I was like, okay, necessity is the mother of invention. I've got no job. I've got no income. I need to put food on the table. And then I started freelancing. So the 12 years of marketing experience I had learned, mm. I then started freelancing and I got some clients. Yeah. And I did marketing strategies for them and okay. like websites and and met the most amazing people in 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 that space in the in the web and marketing and digital sphere and we worked together and and i helped a few clients and one day i got a call out of the blue from a lady i don't know mm. and we just had a five minute chat and she said i need to put you in a room with a man mm. he's the ceo of a company yeah and they do equipment so i'm thinking equipment what does that mean so anyway Few months later, yeah. got into the room with this man yeah. for an interview. It turned out to be a two-hour conversation. It wasn't an interview; it was fantastic, yeah. and we spoke. I mean, you're a great conversationist as well. Like the way you talk, you're a oh, great conversationist. The way you talk, like the way you convey information, I feel like it was part of the reason why it was two hours. Yeah, I would surmise. yeah, but it was a conversation. It was great, and mm. and his PA kept coming to check, like, is are you guys still alive here? <laughs> <laughs> this interview is very long yeah. and yeah, but anyway, and I had no idea what the, the company actually did. Yeah. And then it was equipment and I thought maybe it's like equipment. I don't know what that means. Is it vacuums? Is it, I don't know. What is equipment? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I got the job and then I realized, oh my goodness, it's machines. It's mm. not equipment. Mm. In my mm. mind, mm. it's machines. Yeah. It's this stuff. These things over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You. Yeah. And all these yellow machines look the same to me. So I didn't know what a backhoe was. I didn't yes. know what an excavator was. Yes. I don't know. We used to call it Ganda Gandas. Yes, when we were still growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was Ganda Ganda. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, we sell Ganda Gandas. Yes. Uh, I think. Yo, yeah. And how do I market this? But the thing about marketing is, is if you've got the principles right, okay, I've learned that. So I went from education mm. to earth moving, construction and mining. Yes. But the principles were the same, right? Mm. So people don't buy products, they mm. buy stories. Yes. So what is the story yeah. you're telling? Yeah. You're not selling something. Yes. What is the story? What do these magnificent machines do yeah. for people? And remember, people make people. So even though we sell machines, mm. it's for people. And to build people and to build businesses and to build our country and to build cities and infrastructure. And so that's how the story came about. And so now today, I'm now at ELB Equipment. Happy place, new happy place. Yeah. But I get to tell the stories of these magnificent machines. They're fantastic. I love mm. machines. Mm. They're amazing, guys. Mm. Children are fantastic. <laughs> machines are my second love. Yes. So, I, 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 yeah. so from education to earth moving, earth moving, uh, earth moving mining and construction equipment. Yes. Yeah. Machines. Yeah. So machines, it's, it's not yes. vacuums. I thought I was going to be <laughs> equipment. What is equipment? Yeah. This is equipment. Yeah. But yeah amazing yeah and yeah happy place happy 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 place yeah i mean your story is indicative of like you may think you start somewhere but end up completely different and it speaks to your passion like it's still it's still very sociable at, at heart yes you're still learning people's stories yes and you're still i guess augmenting people's stories with providing them with these machines Correct. please tell me more about like your day-to-day -day here at elb like what's a day like for you here oh it's different every day yeah every day is different yeah. but it's exciting so Going back to my finance time, mm. I was stationed at a desk and I also learned that I can't sit still for very long. <laughs> so my day would, it depends on what's happening. So if I have an event yeah. and you, Man Made Media help me and you help me with Nampo, Nampo Boiteville, yes. <laughs> 
So it depends on, on what's happening. So part of marketing is, yeah. is events uh, and launches. So if we get a new machine or machine a new range, we do product launches. Yeah. And, and you know, this isn't like displaying something small and this is the new cream. It's a machine. So you've got to move things and, and there's logistics and there's planning and there's strategizing and there's creative direction and how aesthetically uh, and what's the story again and you know so so a lot of my day is and a lot of my my work is dependent on other people to make my vision or my strategy different elements to come together and make it a reality whether it be a a trade show mm. or whether it be a product launch or whether it just be a customer handover yeah whatever it may be, or, or, or even social posts, social media posts, whether it's video content, static content, just you, in marketing, you are dependent on other people to make your the team. Yeah. yeah. You, so, so no man is an island ever. And yes. anyone that thinks that they can do things by themselves is no. So you are very dependent on other people and amazing people yeah. like you. Thank you. To make <laughs> your vision, you have a vision and you have a strategy to make it a reality mm. so uh, it's a lot of liaising with people uh, and suppliers and and bringing all things together and there's a deadline so that's the goal this is what is the vision is for that day yeah. and then you've got to put all the elements together the logistics the machine transports the cleaning of machines the PDIing of machines that's yeah. pre delivery inspection FYI get all of those moving parts working together in tandem so that we can get to the, the common goal, End goal. Yeah. yes well, before we go any further, you can realize we are out and about, we are on site, we are on set, we are immersing ourselves in the interview. But before we can even wrap this up, I want to give a big thank you to Lemon Africa. So they assist with e-commerce services for all the business to business enterprise. To you, Lemon Africa, we give you a big shout out. Please, please, please check out the link in the description, get more information about them. So Lemon Africa, we thank you. Peace. Well, thank you for that. Like I, I get the ethos. And I think one thing I think from face value that someone can tell and you telling me your story as well, it's a very, from when you started packing boxes, it's very rugged to where you are now dealing with earth moving, mining and construction equipment. Yes. It's very rugged yes. and very masculine. 100%. And having said that, like, how do you find yourself or how do you navigate the space where it's very male dominated? There's a very strong, rugged energy in what you do. Like, how do you navigate that? So, uh, look, the, the, the world is changing and I'm, and I'm really, really, it's exciting times, right? Yeah. So, so there's this big spotlight on gender equality, you yeah. know, and, and where women doing the same job got paid, I think, 70% or 30% less than, than their male counterparts. Yeah. And, and women just being given opportunities yeah. in male-dominated industries. Yeah. And, and I, I can honestly say that I'm really blessed to be <laughs> we've got friends yeah <laughs> nah, Hardy dogs, yeah. yeah i'm very blessed to be in in this company elb mm. because they mm. are very um it, it's meritorious so it doesn't matter what gender you are your your progression and and your promotion and your, your rewards are based on merit you know what i'm saying to you so south africa in fact the world is we are actually having ranked 20th on the gender equality scale out of 145 countries in the world. Can I say something? Mm. So to those who don't know, guys, um, ELB is actually a big company that have been um, in, in business for the past 100 years. Over they, 100 years. Over 100 years. Over 100 right? years, yes. yeah. There is a heritage. There's a heritage. A long, a long, long heritage. heritage. So this, yes. this is, a, I'm very proud to be part of this company. It's, mm. And it's got amazing leadership. Um, that has navigated it through this time. But yeah. even in this industry, more doors are opening up for women, but it's for women to take that, take, you know, take hold of that. So women often feel like, um, almost, uh, and it's maybe a, a woman thing where you're mm. like, I have to prove myself in this male dominated industry. Yes. But so that I can be part of the boys club. I don't want to be part of the boys club. Yes. I'm okay to be me. And the boys will accept me the mm. way I am. So by virtue of who you are. One hundred percent. And like you mentioned, by merit as well, the work you 100%. put in. One hundred percent. If you come in and you do your best every day, and yeah. you push the bounds, and you, you will get, 
you will get sometimes people digging their heels in. But if mm. you just keep, you know, if you've got a dream, if you've got uh, a hope, if you've got a vision mm. and you work hard, mm. Men, women, everybody will see it. Mm. Across you know the board. You are. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be, I don't want to be part of a boys club. I'm quite happy being a woman, but, but the boys accept me the way that I am because you've got to be you, authentically you. Make sure that the you that's authentic is hardworking, mm. does have a work ethic, mm. is a good person. Mm. So ultimately I said to you, people make people. Mm. Are you making people or are you breaking people down? Do you understand what yeah, I'm saying to you? Yeah, 100%. And, and women need to be yourself, but make sure that yourself is the good you or the best you, not the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to climb the corporate ladder by stepping on that one, that one, that one, that one. Okay? I'm going to force my way into this boys club. No. Just be you, but make sure the you is a good you. Yeah. With a good work ethic. Yeah. With drive. Yes. With with I'm a force to be reckoned with being me. Yeah. I don't have to prove anything to you guys. Yes. I have to prove it to me. Yes. Yeah. I feel like the qualities you speak of always come as a result of being refined and like prepared for, for great things. So I feel like yeah, you would have had to have gone through something a lot. to have these values. Yeah. So can you tell us like some of the challenges? I mean, I think we've spoken of one now being a lady in a very male uh, dominated industry. Yeah. But outside of that, like, are there any significant challenges you went through and maybe one you'd like to share with, with, with the guys? Here? So ironically, in that two hour interview conversation, yeah. uh, my CEO at the time asked me three very uh, funny questions. And, and I thought, am I being punked? I don't know, is there a hidden camera somewhere? Who, what does this even mean, you yeah, know? Yeah. The first question he asked me was, now remember, I've never been in earth moving yes. or construction or At mining. The time, yeah, yeah. His first question was, do you cry easily? It's like, sorry? <laughs> what? He's like, do you cry? <laughs> yeah. Do you cry easily? Yeah. And then again, I was like, I'm going to be honest with him. No, I don't cry easily, but I do cry because I've learned that crying isn't weakness. Crying is healing and it's also releasing. So I said, there's two reasons I will cry. Number one, I'm really angry and I can't deal with the object of my affliction the way I would want at the time. And so number two, yeah, 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 yeah. And number two, I cry when my heart's really, really broken. Yeah. So I used to think crying was weakness. It's not. It's actually, it's strength and it's healing and it's release. And women, we are emotional beings. It's okay. It's okay to cry. Go to the bathroom and cry. Hell, sometimes I'll sit at my desk and cry. <laughs> and, and it's okay. Because after my cry, I'm right. okay, pull yourself towards yourself. Now I'm ready to go. Best believe I've released, I've cried, now I'm ready. What's the next step? Yes. Okay? The second question he asked me yeah. was, are you moody? <laughs> <laughs> Who asks you, are you moody? Okay. So again, I was like, I'm going to be honest. It was a very personal question. And these, and these are very woman-oriented. Yeah, women ask questions right? as well. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Are you moody? Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm sure there's a camera here somewhere. <laughs> it's got to be a joke. So I was like, well, not generally, but uh, honestly, there's one week in the month. It's usually around the same time every month that I can be moody. Yes. And I said it confidently. Why? Because I'm a woman. Yes. Okay. It's biology. It's biology. Yes. It's just, it's who we are. So uh -huh. yes, I am moody once a week, yes. once, once a month. Yes. I try not to take it out on anyone, mm. but yes, I am. Mm. Why? I'm a woman. Mm. That's what happens, right? Yeah. Why must I hide from it? Yes, yes. It's definitely. authentically me. His last question <laughs> was, can you stand up for yourself? And I thought, what is this man asking me? And I was like, I love people. But make no mistake about it, I most definitely can. Yeah. From the biggest, biggest, scariest man, and I've done that in the yeah. past. Face your lion, and very yeah. often your lion will turn around and walk away from you. He's not going to attack you. So I learned at a very young age, face your lions. Don't yeah. be scared of it. Face it. Face it head on. And I said, I, I don't, I, I'm not a, a conflict person. I prefer not to, I prefer to avoid it, but I most definitely can stand up for myself. Well, let me tell you, 
I understood exactly why he asked me that question once I started getting into this industry. Sounds like it was a lot of like cross screening psychology. I think he was letting you discover yourself as yeah, you were yeah, talking no. to him. He just needed to know that yeah. being in this industry, I would be able to handle myself. And um, yeah, so so I was like, yes, I I just answered honestly. Yeah. And I did I did have to learn. There are unfortunately still some men. Um, I haven't experienced it at, at ELB, but unfortunately there still are some men that um, see women as less than. Mm. Or that if you're in a meeting, they won't speak directly to you. When you're chairing they the meeting, they look at the man. They're speaking to the man. Oh yes. You know what I'm and saying? They can't descend. So I've learned how to navigate them. Yes. And ne navigate <clears throat> that. You know. <clears throat> also without, uh, you know, disempowering that person. You know. So e EQ is something that I, I'm oh, yes. working really emotional, hard. Emotional, emotional intelligence. intelligence. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, so if with much, with age and maturity becomes EQ, and 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 I don't get it right all the time. Trust. Especially in that one week a month <laughs> when I'm moody, yeah. I don't get it right all the time. Yeah. But you know, you try, and, yeah. and with age comes wisdom. Yes. So, so any business or any career is about relationships with people, it's, and and if you can build good relationships, even with uh, people that that see women as less than, mm. if you can figure out how to make them see your value by being the good authentic you authentic self, yes, yes, yes. then relationships do do develop yeah. you know what i'm saying too so yeah uh it, it's it it is sometimes tough um but where i'm at right now i really have a fantastic team of men that respect women and that that accept me the way that i am you know what i'm yeah. saying to you and um speaking about relationships just a little bit of context um Myself and Angie did work together at an event, um, Nampo Borderville. It happens once a year in that community, and we helped execute the ELB stand. And I think when I was there with you, yeah, a very striking quality that that kept like appearing over and over was like your sense of always finding a solution. That's one thing. And to be honest, one thing I admire about you, you were like, "Tepo, if you can't use one, you still have two, three, four, five, ten <laughs> to work with, yeah. right?" You've been talking about relationships with the people in your life, the people you work with. And now I want to allude more to your relationship with yourself. Like, I like that aspect of yourself that always finds solutions and is apt and disposed to always find solutions. Like, yeah. please tell me more about that. So I must be honest with you, my relationship with myself is actually my relationship with God, mm. right? So I'm far from the perfect Christian. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong, yeah. right? But in when I got retrenched in 2020, it was mm. the most horrible, but yet most humbling and most amazing two years of my life. Because when you lose everything and you are down to your knees, mm. there's no way that you can look but up. A yes. And I did. Yeah. And let me tell you, God opened doors and he taught me such lessons, such valuable lessons, life lessons. And that's where you know the the eq came in and the patience and the endurance right so when you go through hard time there's endurance and endurance builds character it's actually biblical endurance builds character you know and and it's in those trials that you actually learn that stuff you know what i'm saying to you and i had no idea that two years later i would be in earth moving mm. mining and construction mm. Never. Yeah. I thought I was going to go to another, I was going to do marketing for another elite private school. Yeah. And I was going to have children and you know, it was going to be they all happy that, days. They call that sacred serendipity. Oh. <laughs> but sorry, as you were. Let me you tell were. you, but I was so uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm so used to being uncomfortable that it's comfortable being uncomfortable. Because there's many times when I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do here. Hey, yeah. how do you do a Nampu? I've never, it's the biggest <laughs> agricultural show in the San yes, here. Yes. I don't know what to do here. But my, my, my relationship with myself is my relationship with God. Because yeah. then I turn back and I'm like, Lord, please, man. It's me again. I don't know what to do here. Yeah. Please send the right person or the right people. Or show me what I'm supposed to do here. Because yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And you know what? He's never let me down. Yeah. He's never let me down. So, so my relationship with myself is not my relationship with myself. My relationship with myself is my relationship with God. Because everything I do is dependent on Him. Fact. Fact, yeah. Fact, true story. Yeah. So yeah, and then reading the Bible, praying, and and I have honest conversations with God. I'm like, yes, this Lord, eh? I don't know, hey, mm. I don't know 
I don't know about this table guy. Hey, is he the one to do this for me? Hey, you know by the way, she do? prayed every day. Every so it was a four day event. Every single day, like she prayed, like with me. And before that. And before. That, and yeah. during that. <laughs> and after that. Because yeah. afterwards, you've got to say thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To thank you. Yeah. Because there are still days I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just tell you. Uh, yeah. And and my bosses know because yeah. I tell them I don't know what to do here. Played by yeah. I'm gonna go pray now. I tell them I'm gonna go pray now. Tomorrow I'll come back with with, yeah. with but what I've learned is is there's always things happen, but it's how we deal with the things, right? So there's always a plan to be made, always. That's why I said to you, Tipple, these things happen. Okay, so plan A is not working, right? So let's look at C D E B C D E. Okay, what do you need from me? How can I make it better for you? Yeah. How can I help you? And right? she did. She did. Yeah. Actually, it was you. <laughs> it was all you. <laughs> I feel for our viewers, a lot of them might consider social media to be like something related with clout. They see it around like uh, celebrities, they see it for like people who are in like the limelight. But you, your story now is indicative of like you working in social media, it can be in this space as well. How do you find dealing with social media for, for ELB? So social media isn't just influencers. Yes, you get social media, I mean, ugh, influencer marketing and... But social media is such a fantastic platform because you reach different target audiences. So obviously our target market is for people that are operating on mines and that are operating on construction sites. Think about the floods in KZN mm. and the tornado. Absolute destruction. Mm. Okay. We have the machines that can help rebuild that infrastructure and by extension rebuild KZN and by extension, rebuild people's lives. And the businesses that are contracted to do that. You know what I'm saying to you? So who who is our target market? It's no use, I'm gonna get Kim Kardashian <laughs> to come and sit in an excavator. Okay, because the gentleman that's got a construction business, yeah. Not really concerned about Kim Kardashian. Mm. What he's concerned about is, is this machine? Is this the best machine? So, so the machines mm. are our influencers. Mm. In That's my mind. That's a beautiful take. I like that take, actually. The machines are, are my These influences. are the superstars. 100%. And you mentioned you telling a story. So the story is around these machines. 100%. So the person This one of your babies. Yes, this this is this is a special machine. This is called the Trouble. Trouble. Okay. Yeah. So, so what it does is there's a big round Trommel, actually, yeah. up at the top. So the excavator, which is behind us, okay. takes ground from a site. And okay. then you, there's different sizes. Yeah. So you get big rocks, you get smaller rocks, yeah. you get uh, stones, and then you get fines, which is sand. So there's yeah. trommel, and it's got lots and lots of different conveyors. Yeah. This sorts it out into different sizes. Yeah. So, for example, your bigger rocks you may use for one section of the industry, your smaller gradients you may use for, for creating asphalt or making asphalt, uh, a different size you may use for making cement for construction. So this, this bad boy yeah. actually sorts all of it into, into different sizes. Yeah, I see there's a conveyor belt there as well. So that's only that one. Yeah, yeah. Only so, one. so it goes, that's the feeder. That's where the excavator would feed oh, all feed of the ground. Yes, yes, and yes. then goes through this massive trommel or this this drum, we'll call it a drum. And then all these other conveyors open up and it sorts it out. There's different screens in there. It sorts out, okay, so this size rock goes that size. Yeah. Smaller rock this size, yeah. stones this size. So these machines do fantastic things. They're yeah. amazing, amazing things. Can we have a look at those machines there? Sure. Yeah. Your babies. Well, they're big babies. <laughs> oh, they're yeah. big, big babies rather. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but they are. Please. Because the whole point we want to immerse ourselves in this experience, you know, give the the viewers just a day, like in your life, like what it is like being here and being around all these very big, but very um, um, robust machines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so these machines over here are are mostly our mining machines. So very often, earth moving and mining machines will work together because you need this machine, an yeah. excavator, yeah, to feed into these bad boys here so it will scoop up the ground yeah. and it will feed into one of these mining machines then these machines will either crush them and then sort it out into different sizes again then your wheel loader will come and collect 
that's what it's called the wheel loader they'll come and collect the different sizes and go put it in a truck and off it goes for whatever the use is whether it's again asphalt or or construction or whatever so so all of these machines work in tandem or in conjunction with each yes. other so yeah so this this we had one of these at nampo yes the dresser this is a dresser so yeah. this is a dozer this is the back of it so you can tell me what do you think these things do i would say they peel off part of the ground which they're kind of doing now already correct so they yeah. they pick and they, they loosen pick, yeah right and then the front of the machine has that massive blade. If you can remember, we use the blade as a, as a, as a, as a, a billboard. We, we start, yeah, we a start billboard. the decal there. So that grades the ground. It makes it flat. Yeah. So it kind of, it kind of explains to you what it does. So before any, before there's any construction on the site, if you see new townhouses or new uh, construction, yeah, they would usually grade grade uh you know the ground and make like get rid of all of the trees and the the gravel but it's not just this machine there's so many other machines there's compactors that will compact the ground to make sure that it's that it's compact and that the earth is solid you yeah. know for construction yeah so so yeah this is this is our i i think these are like beautifully painted fingernails you know it reminds me of the lady's <laughs> nails yeah, yeah and then yeah, when yeah. the claws come out she can she can unpick and scratch i was going to say know? like you give them a masculine <laughs> quality i feel that she's quite feminine really there's a feminine attribute to them but as well. this thing this thing is a mean machine also yeah 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 and then we have uh cone crushes screens these are the mining machines um they they are the ones that basically uh crush and sort and and um, you mentioned a lot of aggregate rock the time we were at Nampo. Yes. So they crush aggregate rock. They crush. So you can take different sizes. Sometimes rock is is this big, bigger yeah. than me. Yeah. These bad boys crush it yeah. into the size, and you can set you can set the the setting so that you can get the size that you want out of it for whatever application it's going to be used. So so yeah, there's different models, and so these. Power screen machines, yeah. your your screens, your crush, your crushes, um, they come from Ireland. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so so we've got oh, machines. Sorry. Just from some context. So ELB um, consolidate different brands, so they get different brands all across the world. House them in one environment, being ELB, and then sell them off to their to uh, our clientele. To your clientele. That's why we are the world's best from a single supplier. Yeah. So we we get the world's best machines. Yes. And then we are your one-stop shop. But yeah. we don't just sell machines because when the machine is sold, what then? Then our relationship with you continues, right? Because your machine's going to break. Mm. Your machine needs to be serviced. Mm. Your machine needs parts. Mm. So we've got a fully fledged, mm. we've got a parts department mm. for all these machines. Doesn't mm. matter what your machine is. Yeah. We've got that part. We've got a technical department. We've got field technicians. We're there for yeah. our customers. We people yes. make people yes. so when your machine does give you problems or there is a problem yeah our people are going to look after you the yeah. person you know what i'm saying it's beautiful man. yeah yeah so for any of our viewers who would maybe want to operate these trucks like what is an what is a uh, procedure they need to take to you know become an uh, operator well first of all you would yes. need proper training right yes. so that's also one of the things that we do offer so when we when we do sell a machine and deliver it we offer training because it can kill you guys. Mm. <laughs> it mm. can kill people, okay? <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing, yeah. you can roll over somebody or you can doze somebody. Yeah. Truth of the matter. So, so yeah. we offer training. We offer that support also. We also have operator packs. So we, we tell people or we show operators what it is that you need to do. Health and safety. This, this lever. A lot of it is joysticks. It's actually so cool. It's like when you operate some of these machines, it's like playing... Mario Brothers. Yeah, there's a gamification. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and this <clears> button <throat> does this, and it lifts. This button raises the the bucket, and so so we offer training. So there's extensive training. You've got to know what you're doing. Mm. Yeah, you, and then you get like a, a certificate to say mm. you're an operator for this specific machine. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've got to we've got to look after people. Can right? you operate one of them? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Have you tried? Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So whenever there's sales training and there's, there's uh, practical, I, I will put my hand up because I just want to 
getting the machine. Yeah. Okay. I just want to lift the bucket up and down, up and down. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. And I just want to move it because when you sit in a cab and the machine is moving, it's it's like powerful. It's mm. it's it's just a feeling. It's just a rush. I mm. never thought I would love machine. I love machines. Yeah. Can you walk yeah. that way? Yeah, please. So this this one over here is over here. actually this is a this is a drilling machine. So have you ever seen on mines they blast they blast mines so they put dynamite. So these are your drillers, your Purukawas. They actually drill holes. Yes. So that the blasters can put in the dynamite. Site is cleared, blast, and then they blast. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. 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 How often do you go on site whenever these trucks are being used? So so I I well I've only been there. <sighs> What is it? Nine months. Yeah. yeah. So I haven't um, gone on site. Oh yeah, some of the parts. Sorry. Yet. Those are very heavy. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they are very heavy. So uh, very, very heavy. So, so yeah. So these are, are parts. But um, you know, again, if if a customer needs a uh, modifications or or, or or certain added specs, we can do that for our customer. We've done that. You yeah. Know? Um, so yeah, this is this is called GET ground engaging GET. tools because it goes into the ground. So you yes. can see that is bucket teeth because the teeth is what what um, goes into the goes ground. Into the ground. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm too excited. I cut you off. You no, were going to no. still tell me how it is being on site and how yeah, regularly so you go on site. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm going on site uh, next week. Mm. So yeah. So I'm going to my first site. I'm quite excited. Um, a lot of my work is is basically office bound, you mm. know. Um, but I, I'm very excited, and, and ELB is very open to, you know, letting staff go and experience. Yes. So you get a better understanding of what it is that we do. So and more I, information when you talk to customers and clients. Yes, yes, yes. Again, yes. Yeah. so that I can meet the people. Oh yes. Right. Yes. So over here is our wash and spray bay. There we go. That's that's that's, that's the same your drilling machine. machine. You that's saw. a Furukawa drilling machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the business. Wow. <laughs> and I see the joysticks inside as well. You see? <laughs> I see the joysticks, yeah. It's like it's like playing a video game. Yeah. How awesome. So you jump in the cab. Yeah. And then you drill uh you drill into the ground and you get it ready for the blasters to to blast. Okay. Then this over here is the our tomo. Yes, <laughs> this is the excavator. Yes, that's a big bucket. Yeah, yeah. So that's you get different. Very big bucket. You get different size buckets yeah. depending on what the customer's needs are. You get even bigger ones than this. This is amazing. Yeah. So this is our spray booth. Um, we've done custom custom spray jobs for for customers. Really? Yeah. If you want a pink excavator, hey. <laughs> For cricket, cricket for the the cricket day. What is it? The pink day. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I think I have more context when you mentioned the fingernails. Yes. One of the buckets back there for the dresser. Correct. The yeah. claws come out. <laughs> right. So this yeah. is a different dresser. You can see that's only got one. Um, but yeah. So so machines come here to the. We now at our PDI center. Yeah. This is where machines come for for servicing, um, or if new machines go out, we we clean them. We spray them if the customer wants different specs. Um, we do touch-ups. We test them before mm. it goes out. Mm. Um, and then also, like I said, we've got, you can see we've got workshops all over. Yes. And this is where we will, will fix and service customers' machines. Yes. It's also also done in the field. So field technicians go out and do it also. And I think having been around the crew, um, the time we were working for Nampo, because we were displaying diff different trucks there. Yeah. And I mean, Machines. Sorry, different machines. <laughs> Apologies, different machines. Different machines. Yeah. And I got to meet some of your colleagues, and there was this deep sense of pride and just adoration mm. for what they do. 100%. How does that, what, 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 what actually is the impetus? What brings that across? Like, what makes your team so you know, like, passionate? I mean, the guys are here. I mean, guys, it's a Saturday. Morning, morning. But we have crew here on a Saturday working. Yes. You know, so yes. where is this? I think it's where the, comes this passion for, look, for what I you think, do? I think, I honestly, yeah. I, in my view, I honestly think it's the, so, so our CEO, mm. I think he's been CEO for the past four years. So yeah. he's relatively new CEO. But yeah. the amazing thing about this man is, is that he started right at the bottom. He worked in the parts department and he was a technician and he worked in different departments and he worked his way up. 
literally, he worked in every area of the business. He got his hands dirty. He wore overalls. He, he still today, mm. if he goes on site, he will put on his, his PPE, his mm. overalls. Mm. And he understands the challenges every department faces. Yeah. He understands what it is to be working in parts. He understands what it is to be working in technical. He understands what it is to be working in sales because he was a salesman also. And I think because he's got that emotional intelligence, experience and empathy, he's come in and he's changed the culture. And the culture at ELB is an amazing one. We, we literally are a team. We've got each other's backs. And if you work in a good culture where you are seen, where you are rewarded, where you are built up, where you are pushed, you know, to be the best you can be, it makes it easier. And where you've got leadership that, that respect you and that see you, it makes it easier for you to work harder. You actually want to because, because the culture is just such a phenomenal one. It's such a phenomenal one. Work-life balance is, is important and they, they encourage that. They encourage happy, happy, happy people at home, which will translate to happy people at work. And when you are at work, you are respected and you are seen. And, and it just makes you want to work harder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we have each other's backs, <clears throat> man. Mm. I can't pick up that <laughs> hammer. But let me tell you, if the sales guys are with me, they're like, Ange, come, we got you. We're going to do this together. Yeah. We've got each other's backs. It's, it's just an amazing culture that's being created. And it's not just by our CEO, it's all of our, our leaders. And, and it's just, I, the, the culture that I'm in is, is an amazing one. And, mm. and it makes you want to, mm. to work harder. It makes you happy to come to work every day. Look, there are days when I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so tired. Do I, <laughs> please man. But then I get to work yeah. and we are laughing. Yeah. Do you know laughing is important? Yeah. We are laughing and we are joking and we are chatting. And then, and then the day gets better. Yeah. Laughing and crying are somewhat similar. Like you release emotion. Correct. They're very similar. Correct. And um, speaking of emotion, I just want to segue a little bit, mm -hmm. just off topic a bit. Yeah. I did some research on you when I was preparing for the interview and I learned that you were once a choreographer. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes, in my younger days. In your younger days. When you I could touch my toes <laughs> and do the splits. <laughs> How was that experience? Yeah, so I did dance from the age of four. I used to do modern, tap, ballet, Spanish, Latin American. Yeah, I loved dance. Wow. Absolutely loved dance. And then You're a contemporary dan uh, dancer? Not contemporary, so it's really. Yeah, contemporary is a, is a form on its own. So contemporary okay. dance, modern tap ballet. Then you've got Spanish. Yeah. And you've got Latin American. I yeah. love Latin American. I love the Latinos actually. Yes. So so yeah, I did that. And then when I started at Bishop Haven School, they were like, right, we got to do uh, school productions. Yeah. Nobody knows how to teach these children how to dance. And they were like, Angelique, can you do it? And I was like, I don't know. I'm so unfit. Hey? So, yeah, I used to choreograph for yeah. the productions and, and we used to do from hip hop yeah. to um, contemporary, okay, to, to ballet, just, and just, just fun, man. It's just, yeah, so I, yeah, now I dance at home because after five minutes I need to sit. Yeah, <laughs> but I still see like a synergy between when you're a choreographer and now where you are today with ELB. Yeah. So only because even there too, there were times where you were not sure on how to do something mm. and you figure it out. And then you've kind of brought like that same, that same impetus and that viewpoint and yeah. just navigation here at ELB as well. So I don't know. Maybe I, think actually didn't see, I, I actually, you saw that correlation. I actually didn't see it. I think yeah. you just brought that to my attention. Yeah. I didn't see that. That's what I see. Okay. I think but, maybe we must move away. I think yeah. they're going to move this, this bad boy. But we, we're visible. They're not going to crash us, hey? Because no, we've got our, our reflectors, <laughs> reflectors on. on. Yeah. Yeah, it's one thing I see. Like, I think there's a correlation with you being able to just improvise. I think dance is improvision at some point. Yes. You improvise. Yes. And that same nature you kind of brought here as well. True. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? It's a, it's a good, cool. good way of looking at it. Yeah. Nice correlation. Yeah, well done, people. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've seen the... The PDI center, can we have yeah. a seat? Yeah, let's go inside. Let's go in. But thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. This space is amazing. I learned a lot, actually. Another tour again. Thank you. <laughs> Off to you, my lady. Thank you. So, Angie, um, again, thank you so much for the tour. We got to see like your amazing workspace, all the different nuanced machines out there. It's it's, it's amazing. Um, I want to get get back to your social media experience. I just want to create a scenario. Mm -hmm. So we at Vatam Corp are still a fairly new platform. We have around like 70 viewers and we're still also refining our skills with social media and getting word out there. Mm -hmm. What kind of quick tips could you give us and maybe someone else out there who wants to start up a business and you know, manage their social media well. Like, what are like just things to look out for, things to just focus on? Okay, so so um, from so I've been on your platform and I've 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 looked at some of your interviews. I think the thing that you've got really really going for you um, is the fact that you are telling stories, right? So marketing. It's not about selling products or selling anything. It's about telling stories. And you tell people stories, right? And different kinds of people. So I'm different from the lady you interviewed the, the week before and from the man you... We've all got our own story. Yeah. And people love stories, right? And my story might resonate with somebody where somebody else's story might resonate. So you've got that, you've got that going for you. And as you and, you... and your stories are about different people and interesting people. So that is your niche. It's people, right? You people and their stories and sharing their stories, right? That is your authentic self. That's what your authentic plan is. Yeah. Stick to that authentic plan because now I am going to go and tell 10 people, hey, go and subscribe to Varam Corp because I was on there. wasn't really great, but hey, good. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Not you me. Awesome. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really great. Okay, my hair was standing up. It wasn't on fleek, but please go check it out. And so on and so on. So the best form of marketing still is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It is the most golden form of marketing is word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just keep on what you're doing. You've got this vision. You've got this passion. You keep doing it and doors will open. Doors will open. They will open. And you will meet the right people and you will interview the right people and more doors will open. But you've got to keep at it. Don't ever lose. Don't lose the passion and don't lose the hope. Mm. Okay, So hope is what keeps everything going. I hope for this. So we're on 70 now. Okay? Two months time, we're going to be on 700. And it's going to go up in increments of 10. Speak it into your lives. I speak it into this platform. It will, it will faith. It will grow. Thank you. Thank so, you for that. So, so people that want to, or, or younger kids that want to do marketing, because marketing isn't just social media. You know, you, you can get people that specialize in just social media. There are programs that um, that uh, the, the government funds, for example, we do Yes for Youth at ELB Equipment. We recruit, I think we're recruiting 27 unemployed youth, and we are putting them in different areas of, of the business. And they are learning, and we are we are paying them a salary every month. But they're learning, you know. And and I'm very excited because I'm getting a marketing yes for youth person, and he has no, no idea about what marketing is. But I'm so excited because I've got the opportunity. Mm. Well, myself and my colleague <coughs> Louisa, we've got the opportunity to empower a young person. But this is an an initiative by the government. Uh, or the Yes for Youth program, and in partnership with companies like ELB, you know. For any viewers out there keen on joining the program, how do they how do they find you? Uh, ELB equipment. So so we are in conjunction with um, the with Yes for Youth. So they actually, in fact, on our social media pages, uh, there was actually a lady, a young lady, that um, she's now got her own production company. And she was part of the YES program. And, and ELB, um, back then, this was many years ago, um, funded her and helped her. And today she's got her own, her own uh, production, production house. house yeah. you know? and, she's, and, and she actually, she, she tells a beautiful story because when she was growing up, they didn't know where their next meal would come from. Oh, man. You know? and, and she grew up in very, very socioeconomic hard socioeconomic um, circumstances yeah. and you know it was through programs like that and the government really does have initiatives 
like that. And and it's where corporates like ERB equipment and business get on board and say, we're part of this, okay? But the kids have to make the means to go. The internet is a wonderful place, okay? It's a wonderful place. It is up to the youth, and in fact, even just job seekers in general, mm. make use of it. Mm. Okay, so McDonald's has free Wi-Fi. If you don't have internet at home, I know, I used to go sit at McDonald's and I used to use their Wi-Fi. I think you can use it for half an hour. And that is how I would maybe send my TV out because I didn't have Wi-Fi. Mm. So where there's a will, there's a way. Mm. But it's about drive and it's about hunger. Yeah. Okay. So necessity, I told you. Mm. Necessity. On the onset of your career. Necessity mm. breeds invention. But make the always, you know. Let us stop blaming our circumstances. Let us stop blaming where we, we grew up, where we were born into. Because it's, you can make it work. But faith, hope, and drive. There's always a way. Always. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, pray. Yeah. Woo, pray. Yeah. We know this now. <laughs> yeah. So um, here at Varam Group, we have, a, we have a sentiment or mantra, we always say, and it's each one, teach one. So based on the chat we had today and the insight you gave us, do you feel there's someone else you would like to recommend that we chat to one day? And why? It would probably be, I'm thinking my current CEO, just because he's for me the first CEO that's actually, you know Drake's song started from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He really is a living example. And the, the man's energy. So, you know, when you meet people, you feel energy. Mm -hmm. You can resonance. feel, you know? Yeah. When you're in his, in his presence, you feel it's just a warmth. I cannot describe it. It's a warmth. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. And he really is. He's a changer. He's a game changer. He's a culture changer. He's, he, and he's humble. He's amazing. He's just got good energy. There are other people, but top of mind right now is him. And in fact, him and, and, and I've got two, well, many other directors. But when I went in for my final interview, I had quite a few. But when I went in for my final interview, it wasn't one where, oh, do you cry easily? Are you moody? And it wasn't that. It was something different. It, yeah. was, a, it was an energy filled interview but all my all my leaders are amazing they've all got different energy you met them they've all got yeah. different energy but just i think for me i would recommend or oh, desmond desmond van heeren uh, just you'll feel his energy you really would mm. yeah. no no did yeah. and um any last words any last words for for the audience Yes, especially to the ladies out there, but for men also, and, and especially the youth. Be yourself, be your authentic self, but make sure that the authentic you is the good you, the best version of the good you. So people are like, be yourself. I'm a murderer. That's who I identify as. No, no, that's not what we're talking about. No, no. Okay, so... Is my best self hardworking? Am I, do I have a balanced life? Do I empower other people? Do I empower the company or the people I come into contact with? Do I touch people's lives in a good way? Good way. Mm. Not murderous, psycho killer way. Okay? <laughs> yeah, you add value. In a good way. Yeah. But <clears throat> be yourself because you are different to me and it's okay. We don't imagine if we were all the same. How mm. boring. Hey? Yeah. Be your authentic self. Be who you are and people will accept you the way you are if you are your good authentic self. Nobody likes bad authentic self. Nobody. 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 Right? So for me, just be your good authentic self. Be you. You can't be anyone else. Yeah. And also, it's so it's, it's so tiring trying to be someone else, eh? Oh, no. Mm. It's just too much effort, mm. eh? Mm. Now you must now put your game face on. <laughs> no. You're playing a character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How tiring. No wonder you're exhausted <laughs> when you get home. Yeah. Hey, yeah. why? 
No, just be you. But be the best and authentic. Good, authentic you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you have it, guys. As she mentioned, please like, subscribe, share the platform. Do it now. We'll give you a second. Do it now. Do it now. Oh, is that the second? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there you have it. Another uh, another day with Farum Cop. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. Thank and you. And all the best for your endeavors. Um, may your light shine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Same cool. to you. But Farum Cop.